Hey, what's good YouTube? I'm Huck. Welcome to quarantine. We're gonna make some music today using only sounds from inside the house. So I went and filmed myself taking a bunch of samples. Got some stuff in my cat meowing. I've got me uh, blowing into bottles. I punched a pillow. Played with some vitamins. Uh, I lit a match. Played with some cards. And I played with some plants. And uh, it sounds great. I made a beat with it. And now I'm gonna walk you through what I did. So, there's an intro section, which is comprised of just a few fucking things. So what that is, is my cat meowing. I'm not even compressing it. The iPhone compression in voice memos is fire. I'm using a dynamic filter, cutting out all the low end to get rid of that room sound and really just isolate the squeak. The high shelf is dynamic, allowing the highs to come through with the squeak, but then hopefully come down, get rid of that buzz. I took that squeak and I put it into the Logic Stock Sampler. Taco squeak B. Taco is my cat. Throw a, a low pass filter with an envelope on it. It's got a short attack, short decay, slightly longer. That's being driven with the internal drive. Nothing too fancy. And you get... Kind of turns that meow into a bark. From there, I use this thing in Logic called a space designer. And what it is, I googled it. Convolution reverb. Logic in their space designer, you have these warp spaces, which are these weird impulse responses. I have a few favorites. This is one of mine, Radiant Motion. It basically takes a sound and does all this weird granular processing that sounds great on keys in my opinion. It's got a lot of panning going on, a lot of weird textural stuff. Content. From there is going through another instance of Space Designer. And this is just the default reverb. And all together, you've got our intro melody. But an intro melody needs stuff to go with it. I've got a little bit of Foley. This is me trying to light a match through this filter. It's called the Fat Filter from SoundSpot. It's free. Highly recommend it. I use it all the fucking time. I'm just automating that open very slowly. And with the resonance, it takes that white noise and really makes it more of a texture. So that's just going on faintly in the background. Then this, this is maybe one of my favorite samples that I got. It is me taking a eucalyptus branch and hitting it on a table. I did it to some sort of rhythm, then I sped it up. So this is not quantized at all. I just chopped it, squished it into a bar. I just fucking cut the lows out. I fucking love it. I'm gonna use this shit all the fucking time. And the last noise going on during this buildup is this shaker. I have a plastic bag full of chips to a game. I think it's to this game, left, right, center. I shook them up and you get this little shaker. It's a, uh, I think just offset from the eucalyptus. So when it comes in, you get a faster feeling thing. Finally, the drop. First we hear this sound. That is, is me taking a deck of cards and going and I am compressing this one and I am filtering it. Cutting the lows, cutting the highs a little bit with the resonant bump. I feel like when you cut the highs just without any resonance, it just makes it feel a little more flat. With the resonance, you really get that synthy feel. So that's what I did. And the most important part of it is Filter Jam. Filter Jam is another free plugin. Highly recommend it. I've done a lot of things with this, like this. And I don't have the mix all the way up or the resonance all the way up because it's very strong without it. But then with it, it feels like it's rising. As soon as that lets up, we've got the toms. It's the same meow that I did the pad sound with. I did a lot of shit with this meow. I transposed it down by 30, ran it through this thing called Rough Rider. I think this is also a free plugin. Honestly, my first time using it. Sounds like Animal Crossing. Topical. I'm using Isotope Trash a lot on this. I think it's a really good sound design tool. This Convolve shit is almost like impulse response, but for distortion. You know, I don't really know what the fuck it's doing. That's how it sounds now. This is my kick that comes in later. Chopped it up and squished it so it was really quick. Bust the two of them together with a fade, bringing the pitch down. Then I compressed that, threw it through another instance of trash. Boom, got a tom. And then if it wasn't enough, I put it through another fucking instance of trash. It's just making it fatter. So then I went back, took the same meow sample, layered it. Same squeak sound, same filtering going on. But this time, when the sample is triggered, it's starting an octave higher and sweeping down. So you get this... 
with Tom's. It's very subtle. It's maybe not even worth it. Then I've got another fucking trash going. I'm pressing it. Pitch shifter, bringing in a lower octave without it with it you know it's like a two oscillator synth if you will and then the tremolo just bringing it left and right really quick i like tremolo as a transitional element all together here's our intro so now to the bulk of it the pad we have two new things me blowing on a bottle of rum it's got some rum in it not full i'd say threw it in the sampler put it through low pass filter being driven slightly you do get this sort of like white noise element and it sounds very natural and it's cool this if you don't have it just fucking pause the video and go download it because it's free and it's great the tal chorus lx it is modeled off of a juno chorus it sounds so good this compressor is just for side chaining to the kick and then just a little bit of reverb beautiful next this it is the same exact chords, but it is me hitting a wine glass with a metal straw. The same exact fucking filter. I'm using the Waves Real ADT, which is doubling the track and delaying one, and panning the original one side and the delayed signal to the neck. It has a built-in LFO to mess with the speed. Just spreads it out nice, the two of the pads together. Sounds good to me. Here's our kick drum. This is me punching a pillow. I put it through a limiter, EQ'd it, boosting the sub frequencies, cutting the highs a decent amount, cutting out most of the crunch while letting some of it come through quickly. That really sounds like a fucking kick. I was afraid it wouldn't cut as much as it needed to, so I added a sub oscillator. I can't even really hear the difference, but I'm sure if you've got some fucking fat ass subwoofers, you're gonna hear it. Compressed it all. Sounds fucking great. Naturally, the kick drum is side chaining to the bass and the pads just to give that pumping. Let's go on to the snare. The snare is me tapping my finger on a book. I stretched it out and then I transposed that down to semitones. From there, I threw it through a filter, cutting the lows but not too much, boosting this mid frequency and then cutting the highs while letting some of them through to get that hit. Something I do a lot on percussion if you haven't noticed already. Then I'm throwing it through this, throwing it through distortion, a little bit of reverb, and some noise with some filtering. Makes things sound like fucking snares. Throwing it through trash. Then I'm throwing it through a compressor. Last but not least, just another EQ. I'm throwing it through this bus, which is just another instance of this Snareify preset on the RC20. My main drum elements are all going through. A Wolf compressor. I really love to put my drums through this parallel setting. So, this is the same hi hat from earlier snare, kick. It's fat. You just heard a little ring in there, which is me throwing a pill into a ceramic bowl full of pills. And it's got this little ding going on. What I got going on here, this sampler setting. I think I messed with the digital and the distortion. It's going to the Snareify bus and the Wolf Comp, and it's getting this nice reverb from the RC20. So, all together. Then we've got a bunch of other percussion. Tried to make a snare out of the eucalyptus hit. Kind of trash. I pitched it down, I compressed it, and I threw it through this digitizer on the RC20. This one's cool. This is the same pill bowl, but it's me just scooping up a bunch of pills. A nice, like... I sped it up a little bit. I took out this one resonant frequency, cut the lows and the highs. That is occurring every time the pill snare is about to happen. It's nice. All my auxiliary percussion is going through its own bus, which is also getting its own parallel compression. It's got a lot of distortion. And then it's also going through the RC20, which is, you know, digitizing, distorting, adding some noise and some reverb, all the percussion together. Let's go on to the bass, because the bass is fucking sick. It's that same squeak from my cat, but pitched down a whole lot. It's the same filtering, but it's just much lower. Fire. That's being compressed quite a bit. So that's one layer of the bass. I ran the bass out through my interface and into my Eurorack setup, where I have the Make Noise Q Pass. Essentially, it is a quad filter. And so what I did is I ran the bass through it, 
with an envelope triggering the filter to open and close real quick. So that's adding stereo imaging to my bass. Threw a filter on it that's cutting the sides at 100. Normally I don't like stereo imaging, anything lower than 300 hertz, but um, fucking let it rock. So this is what it sounds like after it hit the Euro rack and came back. Unintentionally, there's a lot of electronical noise. There's definitely a grounding issue somewhere in this whole fucking little room setup. What you gonna do? The important part, weird stereo rumbling going on left and right, lightly compressing the two signals together and then side chaining to the kick. The last thing is I have this lead sound. That's the same thing as the intro pad, but now it's just doing this melody in thirds. On to the next. R is the buildup. It starts off with this crash. This is also coming from the eucalyptus. Turns out eucalyptus is an incredible thing to fucking sample. Maybe I'll make a whole pack just eucalyptus sounds. If that's something you'd be interested in, let me know in the comments. Anyway, not doing anything to it. And then I threw it through the Oracle reverb. It's at 50% mix, so you're getting a lot of it. Dampening's not so hard, and the time is going infinite. On top of that, spreading in your stereo image. I'm cutting the lows while leaving the highs very open. I'm also compressing the reverb, an interesting aspect to reverb that you don't get often. And then it's adding an LFO to the depth, sort of like a tremolo, to the reverb, which I have coming in slowly over time. Starts to sound like a train track. It's really sick. Then next, just this little foley thing. This is the sound of like a chain scratched along a desk. I have it being limited, and then I have these two RC20 magnitude transitions. And they're meant to be like very interesting sweeps that you do with the magnitude control. One is bypassing everything and adding a lot of reverb, and then this one starts off crushed and filtered out. Here is the magnitude 1 starting at 0 and coming in at the end, and then magnitude 2 starting at 100% and then going to 0, so they cross each other. And then it's being sidechained to the kick. So all together. Side chaining ambient noise is sick. You also get that police siren in the background. Nice bonus. But additionally, I went back to the original eucalyptus file and just picked a separate instance. This one I did quantize. Same filtering, same processing. Just emphasizing these hits. This is the bottle synth from the verse. In Logic's sampler, once it reaches the end of the sample, it stops. You can set a loop so that when it hits the end of the sample, it'll restart at a certain point. You don't want it to start at the very start, it'll just make the loop sound weird. So I start it further ahead and I add a crossfade and it sounds like a really natural, endless thing. If you pay attention, you can get a little bit of where it starts and stops, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not that important. I ran this back out through the cue pass again. The whole chord progression is just building up, building up, building up until the end. I ran it through my synth reverb and then a quick little tape delay and I put the chorus back on it. That cue pass is just fucking fire. It is wild expensive for a filter, but I don't regret it. I also have this little taco meow lead going on. I have it running through the fat filter again, this time on high pass. And I just have it going through a light, nice, long, bright reverb. Building. Building. Long filter sweeps, they just make a build. It ends up at this place. We've got the bottle synth again. And this time it is filtered out quite a bit. It's being band passed here. It's just sort of like this anti-drop, right? But then of course, and here's the full song.
my song. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. Give it a like. Consider subscribing. This is my first real YouTube video. You know, we're all stuck inside. So I'm just trying to give you a little inspiration on how you can take sounds from your place of living and uh, turn it into music. I'm Huck. Check you later.